Chapter 15. Raising the Dead. Was I or wasn't I? Looking back again on the day that the 11 year old me stopped breathing, the natural instinct is to say that I did not die. Perhaps after I collapsed, I somehow started breathing again and revived fully within the next 30 minutes or so. So what did actually happen to me? There was a clear explanation for why I stopped breathing. As the wet paint dried in my room, the volatile organic compounds, VOCs, from the solvent-based paint evaporated into the air. As I lay in my bed, I inhaled them, and as I was asthmatic and susceptible, they inflamed and swelled the inside walls of my lungs. The airways narrowed until I could no longer breathe, which is when I woke up briefly before collapsing. After all these years, I still have not found a simple, natural explanation for how I started breathing again. How did my airwaves recover to the extent that I felt fine and not even mildly asthmatic in that moment? The VOCs had not dissipated, as they can actually stay in a room for up to six months. I took no helpful medicine or inhalers in that period. The only reason I can come up with is a supernatural one. While I guess I will never know all the details of that night, I am left convinced that God answered my mother's prayers and brought me back, giving me a second chance to live. That said, my own level of expectation about the power of prayer to raise the dead has always been low. Apart from my own story, I have never seen it happen, nor have I ever expected to see someone raised from the dead. I like hearing the stories of what resurrection miracles Jesus performed, but can we really follow in those footsteps? When the American speaker Robbie Dawkins came to our church, he said that he was praying for resurrections whenever he got the chance, but he was still waiting to see one. I remember cynically thinking, well, good luck with that, mate. On a subsequent visit, however, Robbie reported his then recent experience of a man that stopped breathing in one of his own meetings in a church near Preston, England. The man had appeared to be clinically dead. Dawkins prayed for him and the man started breathing again and then recovered. I still have not myself witnessed someone being raised from death, but Dawkins' account raises my faith a little, as do the stories I share below. They help me to pray the bigger prayers. The Jellyfish Man In current times, no less in the biblical era, people have resurrection stories that are both fascinating and entertaining. Perhaps none more than former atheist Ian McCormack, who had been night diving in Australia and swam into some highly poisonous box jellyfish. He was stung five times on his arm. He finally got to hospital, but paralysis was leading to death. His Christian mother, on the other side of the world, saw an image of her son and heard God saying that Ian was at that moment close to death and she must pray for him now. In the ambulance, Ian saw his life flash before him. Then in his mind saw his mother praying for him. She was saying, Ian, call out to God from your heart. He will forgive you, Ian. As he lay in the ambulance, he saw words from the Lord's Prayer appear in light before him, which he then made his own. He surrendered his life to Jesus and was filled with peace. The ambulance doors opened. They raced him into hospital, but by now he was in crash mode. He could move nothing but his eyelids. He lost his pulse, then the monitor on his vital organs flatlined. He was clinically dead. As his blood was poisoned by neurotoxins, he was pronounced brain dead. He was moved to the morgue. What followed was an out-of-body experience in which he witnessed first hell, then heaven. Meeting Jesus, he was asked if he wished to stay. He could think of no reason to go back to his body until he had a clear vision of his mother. 
for her alone, to show her that her prayers were effective, he opted to go back. Then in a split second, he opened an eye. A doctor with a scalpel was pricking the base of his foot as he lay on a slab in the morgue. The doctor jumped out of his skin and the nurses in the room fled. Ian was later told he'd been dead 15 to 20 minutes and no medical interventions had been undertaken to bring him back. Waves of God's power flooded through him over the next four hours until he was completely healed. He walked out of the hospital believing in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Ian has then spent the next 40 years plus going around the world telling everyone his story. In the final stages of editing this book, I checked directly with Ian that he was happy for me to relate his experience, so many thanks to him for his very prompt and very gracious agreement. In Ian's testimony, I am particularly struck by the power of his mother's prayers. It reminds me of my own mother. So mums, don't stop praying for your kids. An expectation that we try. Is bringing people back from the dead really expected of us? Surely not. Even to contemplate praying for a dead person surely seems ridiculous. Jesus himself raised some dead people to life, but can he really have expected his followers to do the same? Apparently so. When he sent out his disciples in pairs on their mission trips, he told them what to do with their time. Preach that the kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those that have leprosy and drive out demons. Okay, but that was the 12 chosen ones. Could this expectation not have been for them alone? Well, clearly not, as we see evidence of resurrections in the early church too. In Joppa, a disciple named Tabitha, full of good works and acts of charity, became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Peter was urged to come over. When he did, he turned out the mourners and said to the body, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Later, during one of Paul's lengthy talks, a young man, Uticus, falls asleep and tumbles out of a third story window. He is found dead. Paul takes him up in his arms, prays for him, and his life returns. So it continued. One hundred years later, Irenaeus, a church father, claimed that the dead were often raised through the prayers and fasting of true Christians. Two hundred years after that, St Augustine of Hippo and other church leaders of the time reported eyewitness accounts of resurrections. Throughout the medieval period and into modern history, there has been no shortage of resurrection claims. The case of Ian McCormack, the jellyfish man, is just one in a long line of such miracles going back to Jesus. Muamba. In 2012, I was enjoying a televised FA Cup match. Bolton Wanderers away at Tottenham Hotspur. In the first half, we were all horrified as midfielder Fabrice Mwamba, just 23 years old, suffered a cardiac arrest on the pitch. In the stadium watching the match was leading cardiologist Dr Andrew Diener. He ran onto the pitch to assist. Now when the heart stops, the blood supply to the brain stops. Cells begin to die off after three minutes. You would expect the patient to be brain dead after about 20 minutes. Eventually, after 78 minutes, the medics got his heart beating again. And Mwamba was rushed to the specialist coronary care unit at the London Chest Hospital. A press campaign was started to pray for Mwamba. And many around the world began to pray for Fabrice's recovery. Footballers wore Pray for Mwamba t-shirts underneath their kits. Churches up and down the country held prayer meetings for the young man. About two weeks after the incident, Mwamba regained consciousness. He had no brain damage. 
Dr Andrew Diener told the BBC, if you're ever going to use the term miraculous, it could be used here. Moamba later said, I thank God because I am alive. Without him, I would surely be dead. This is a miracle. The power of Jesus Christ has raised me up and I thank everyone for their prayers and support throughout the world. Death in the Pool I think back now to when I've been invited to do the mission in Mombasa, the bustling port city on Kenya's east coast. I spent the days in the motel preparing for the evening meetings. On my last day in Mombasa, as I was eating breakfast, I heard a cry of alarm. Staff were running towards the swimming pool. By the time I got there, a lady had been dragged from the deep end. She was lying motionless in the recovery position with a small crowd around her. I went over. She looked dead. I stopped near her and I prayed in tongues. When challenged, I said I was a pastor and was praying. That was accepted. After about 10 minutes or so, thank God, she came round and was able to stand up. Later, she explained, I'm a swimmer. and I'd actually been in the shallow end, but then I felt something drag me under and drag me into the deep end. Since I'd arrived, I'd swum in the pool every day. There were no vents or drains in the pool that could have done that. Maybe she had just panicked, but that seems unlikely. I suspect it was a case of witchcraft, a reality that beyond doubt many in Africa face regularly. I don't know the signs well enough to be sure, but it was certainly a mysterious event. I don't know what difference my prayers made, but I was glad I prayed. Praying for resurrections. I do not for one minute think that I can add anything useful from my own experience on how to pray for the dead. If I were praying over a loved one, I would spend some time pleading with God and might try commanding the death to go and life to return. My level of faith would probably be low, but in the moment, a surge of faith is possible, as happened to me when praying for the young man with the face tumour and for blind Betty. Among various accounts I have read, the one that spoke to me most was of Dr Sean George, who died of a heart attack in 2008. His medical friends tried relentlessly to bring him back, long after they should have given up. By the time his wife reached the clinic, he had been dead for one hour, 25 minutes, and his body was cold. He also had suffered acute kidney and liver failure. Instead of going in and saying her goodbyes, she took him by the hand and offered a simple prayer for God to give them more time together. Sean is just 39. I am just 38. And we have a 10-year-old boy. I need a miracle. Immediately, his heart started beating again. He gradually made a full recovery. And within three months, Sean was back working full time. He kept all the medical records to prove the miracle to the sceptics. If you ever find yourself in that situation, pray for a resurrection miracle with whatever words come to mind, no matter how ridiculous it feels or how low your faith is. Try anyway. Chapter 15, Learning Keys. Jesus expected his followers to pray for the dead and to see them raised to life. People have been brought back from death with some regularity since the time of Jesus. Whilst it may seem to you extremely unlikely, do not discount the possibility that Jesus could bring back to life one of your loved ones. You need to pray. <laughs>